Hi everyone, I'm quite excited about this video and uh, I've enjoyed recording it. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time and wanted to show you for a long time. It's uh, how to make your own PCBs. Um, so it's taken me quite a long time, it's something about two weeks in total to to master this really uh, and to work out exactly how it works and uh, the best ways of doing it. I've looked at different methods and I've looked at different chemicals and um, yeah, this is, well, I, I actually took 15 attempts in order to be able to um, learn how to do it properly. Uh, I can do it every time pretty much perfectly now, but yeah, it took me quite a while. So what I'm going to share is I'm going to share with you um, the method that I believe is the best um, and how I'm going to do it and how I do it, um, how I make my own PCBs. So I hope you enjoy the video and um, let's get on with it. So before I start with the video, um, I thought I'd just discuss or tell you why you you know why you'd want to make your own PCBs. Well, to start with, it's it's very very cheap. Um, maybe if you were to design them and send them off to China, or whatever, and get them made for you professionally, you would get perfectly good quality boards. But it's around about well for this size, I think it's around about thirty boards for thirty pounds or something like that, including delivery, which. A pound a board is is not too bad, but this can beat that. Um, well, in terms of price, it can anyway. Um, so maybe all of the equipment, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, well, I say equipment, more uh, product really. The products cost me around twenty quid, but I've got big bottles, and you don't need to get big bottles. You can get small bottles. Um, the ferric chloride that you buy, the chemical ferric chloride, you can actually reuse it. Um, so that's good. I bought a big bottle and really I didn't need to buy one. I could have just got a little thing. Um, so yeah, uh, the only cost really, the only cost involved in making these boards is the cost of the PCB, which is here of course, which is not much. It's just a, a piece of copper clad board, um, which is pennies if I remember rightly. Um, and the other cost is three, three millilitres of acetone, which is nothing, you know. And the other cost is 8ml of alcohol, which again is nothing. So if you look at the cost of this, it's probably about 15p or something like that. Um, as a rough guess. So the other thing as well is that this is quick. It's really quick and easy to make these PCBs. Um, you could probably do it in about 10 minutes if, you, if you're experienced. Um, or 20 minutes if you want it drilled. Like this one's drilled, as you can see here. Um, so this particular one, as a test, I did it, and this one took me 10 to 20 minutes. Um, and there's no wait, you don't have to wait for delivery or anything like that. And there's no specialist equipment involved, uh, you can do it with ordinary household stuff. Um, now the other thing as well is that I think the quality is pretty good, I mean, um, although you can see a bit of like pitting or whatever it is there, the actual tracks themselves are, are perfectly fine. So I think the quality is pretty good really. Um, and the other thing is, if you make a design and you send it off to China and it comes back and you've thought, oh, I've designed it incorrectly, well this eliminates that, because this allows you to make your design and test it before you do get it professionally produced. Um, yeah. So anyway, the, the cons of this, there are some cons, well, in fact I wouldn't say some, some there is one at least, and that's that you can only do this single sided, as you can see here, it's only single sided. There's nothing stopping you from putting two back to back or something like that if you if you're really that desperate. But yeah, um, there you go. So anyway, let's get on with the video. So what do you need? You actually need quite a lot of different things, but um, none of them are particularly expensive. So the first thing, the first one of course, is you need your copper clad PCBs or copper clad boards, and they're actually quite cheap. You know, a few pounds for. A few of them. If you get them from China, you can get them very cheap. If you get them from Britain, you can get them, I don't know, reasonably cheap. But you need PCBs to start with, of course. The next thing, you need acetone, which I've got here. It's just a bottle of acetone. Um, you need isopropanol, which is alcohol, basically. Isopropanol. Uh, I've got a bottle of that. This is ferric chloride. Uh, you're going to need a bottle of that. Then you also need a magazine. And again, I've tried all sorts of different uh, things, I've tried all sorts of different papers and stuff, and I found that this particular paper is the best, the absolute best. You can try regular printer paper, but it doesn't work properly for different reasons. You can try photo paper, all sorts of different papers, but yeah, this one is the best I've found. And just to show you exactly what it is, so you can try and get some, 
it's really thin, uh, almost like semi-glossy, non-porous sort of paper really. It's a bit of a weird one. It's like magazine paper. Um, I found that this particular magazine is, is very good. It's like a, it's a news agent's magazine. Um, you're also going to need something like this to mix some chemicals in, which I'll show you later. Now, I'm using a syringe to um, to pull liquids out of various bottles, like that, and then I squirt it into the orange one. Um, but, you know, you could do this with any sort of measuring device, any liquid measuring device, but I use this because I think it's best. Then we also need uh, some wire wool, and this is to clean the boards, like if I just show you here. It does a really, really good job of cleaning them, and you need them to be clean, so you need some of that stuff. Um, what else do you need? Some of these tubs, uh, they come in handy. Um, so you need, I've got two, one for water and one for ferric chloride. Um, some, <coughs> some tissue to wipe up any spills. Some scissors to cut your, um, cut your board out. You'll, you'll see what I mean later. Uh, anything else that we'll need here? Um, not really. So the last thing you'll need is, now again, you don't have to do this, but this is just what I do. I've got this drill press thing and I've set it up with a multi-tool thing here and it's got a 0.8mm drill bit on it. When I use this I just push it down to drill little holes but you don't need to do that. You can actually use a handheld drill if you want and you'll still get reasonable results but if you want top results you need something like that. Anyway so um, what else? Ah, there's one more thing, you need a laser printer. You need a laser printer um, to do anything with this. Any other type of printer won't work. Okay. Right, so the first thing you need to do is print out your design on the paper. Now when you print out the design, have a good look at it. I'm just going to zoom in on mine. And you want to have a look for any scratches, any areas that are not covered with toner that should be. And uh, any general problems. And in this particular design I can't see any problems. So um, we're ready to continue. So now I'll start to cut this out. The next thing you need to do is find a board which is going to fit and give it a really good clean. So I'm going to use some acetone uh, and a bit of alcohol. Just tip a bit on and start cleaning. And it's important not to get any grease on it after you've cleaned it and uh, anything else really, any other rubbish. So the idea is you need to give it a really good clean and make sure there's no grease left on it, okay? Now that's looking about right. The next thing you need to do is have a look at the edges and just see if there are any rough edges because rough edges cause a bit of a problem. If you've got any rough edges what you want to do is just do that to take the edge off it. And if you don't do this what can sometimes happen is that the paper can ride up the side of the board and prevent the border or the edge of your transfer from adhering properly. So if there's a bit of an edge, just scratch it off. Just like that. With a pair of scissors or a knife or whatever. Okay, that looks about right to me. Again, make sure it's clean. Uh, I'll give it one more clean. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is make our mix. Well, I've got acetone here and a syringe thing. And we want an exact uh, mix. And the mix is 3 to 8. I found that it's 3 to 8. On the internet you can see all sorts of other uh, mixes and whatever. But for me, the mix is 3 to 8. That's what I found to work perfectly. I've tried, I've tried other mixes as well, and, and if you put too much acetone in, it doesn't work properly. If you don't pour enough in, it still doesn't work properly. So yeah, three, two, eight. Seems to work perfectly to me for me. So there we go, three, two, eight. So I'm done with the chemicals for the time being. I'll put the lid on this. 
And then what we have to do is get our board and our uh, transfer back without getting them dirty, remember? And let's just put it, we'll put the board on here. Give this a gentle mix. Then get your transfer ready. Again, double check that it is exactly what you want. Get any bits of dirt off it. Get any bits of dirt off this if it's got any on. Looks good to me. So the transfer looks good. The board looks good. So tip some of this on and then quickly make sure it's all over. And quickly put your transfer over it, just like that. Okay. Now, after a few seconds, press it down with two fingers, that's what I do anyway. And then from the middle, let me just zoom in a bit more. From the middle, start doing that. Start pressing it down. So keep going with that and press the sides down. I found the sides to be particularly important because it seems to be the sides that don't always stick. Uh, the borders seem to come up um, if you don't press them down at the start. So keep pressing. I've got acetone or alcohol in a cut in my finger and it's stinging like crazy. Yeah, see, there might be a little bit of problem with the border there, but we should, we should be alright. I'll just keep rubbing that in and hopefully we'll be fine. Make sure there's no sort of lateral movement of the uh, paper at this point because if you do get any movement you basically have to start again because your um, PCP, PCB will be broken. The transfer will get all skewed and whatever. So keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and this takes about um, about five minutes really of rubbing. And usually what I do is, uh, after it dries out, I'll add a bit more, I'll soak it for a bit longer. Just with this stuff here that's uh, on the desk. I'll turn this around now and do this side, make sure this is done properly. And you do have to press quite hard actually. So what we want to do here really, you want the acetone to penetrate the paper, penetrate all the way through the paper to the toner so that it takes the toner off the paper and basically glues it to the copper. That's what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, so this is drying out now, or it's starting to, but I'm going to keep going anyway until it's completely dry. This stage is pretty critical really because if you don't get this bit right, uh, you won't succeed. Um, this is crucial. So it's starting to dry out. I'm a little bit cautious about this bit here because there seems to be some problem with the paper. Uh, oh no, it might be alright. Yeah, the borders are the most difficult bit I found because if you don't get them down properly at the start, they come up later on and basically the toner doesn't stick and because the toner doesn't stick you end up just ruining your board. Okay, so we want to just check the edges and everything now, and just make sure it's all adhered properly. And in my case, it has, apart from a little bit there, you can see that it's riding up slightly. So what I want to do there is just put a bit more on. Just on the problematic border. And just let that soak in and gently rub it in again. So this is for areas that don't adhere properly. I 
and in this case I think it's because there's a little bit of a ridge preventing the paper from sticking down prop uh, going over the side of the PCB properly but that might do it now so so we'll see I'll let that dry out for a minute or two and I'll be back in a minute Alright, it's tried a second time and you can see that the borders are, uh, seem to have adhered properly now. So, that's good. It's dry. So I'll get the water, which is just here, and just um, throw it in basically. And leave this for about about 10, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like that. If you leave it in for quite a while, um, this particular paper will just, will just come off on its own. You know, you'll just do something like that and it'll all come off. Uh, so yeah, about 10-15 minutes is about right. Okay, it's around about 10-15 minutes later. And now this is the moment of truth. Now, with it being 15 minutes, it should just come straight off. There we go. And hopefully all the black toner will stick to the board. Now there was a bit with a dodgy border, wasn't there? So I'll have to be especially careful with that bit. Yeah, there you go. There's a little mark there where it's come off. Now, um, you can actually get around that with a little marker and all that. If you, if you get a special, well, in fact, it doesn't even have to be special. If you get a marker and just draw over it, you might be all right. You might get away with it. Anyway, so there's the board. So I think what I'll do is I'll let this drain off for a bit, and I will attempt to uh, cover over that with a marker. You see that little fleck there? I'll attempt to cover over that with a marker and um, we'll see if it works. <laughs> 